In this video, I'm going to show you how to get email addresses for parents and students out of Infinite Campus and into an Outlook mailing list. I prefer to use Outlook for doing my emails because I think it manages them better and it's much better for formatting. So if you'd like to do that as well, you can follow these instructions. I'm starting in the Infinite Campus Message Center. I'm going to start a new message. Before I can go to the next step, you have to have a subject and a message body. I'm just going to put some random characters to let it take me to the next step. I'm never actually going to send this message. Right now, it is the third quarter, so I'm going to select term quarter three and make sure that all of my classes within that are selected. I'm going to send this fake message to student messenger contacts, which is your parents, and to students because I like to send things. Everything I send to parents, I also send to students. I'm going to click Next. At this stage, I have the option to send the message, but I am not going to send this message. Instead, I'm going to review recipients. For all of my students, that gives me 483 contacts, including all of the parents and the students themselves. Not all of those contacts have an email address, uh, but it's five pages worth of these contacts and the email addresses for some for those that have them. So here I'm going to start selecting them. I'm going to bring my mouse up here and I'm just going to click and drag on down. There we go. And select my first hundred contacts. I'm going to hit control C to copy that. And now I'm going to go over to Excel where I have a blank, blank workbook waiting for me. I'm going to select cell A1 and I'm going to hit control V, which is the shortcut for paste. And that's going to paste everything in. I'm finding some inconsistencies uh, in how it pastes into Excel. In this case, everything has gone into column A. Sometimes I've had everything go into column B. Either way, it's going to work out just fine, but you may have to adjust the formulas that we're going to use in a little bit based on whether your pasting goes into column A or column B. Um, so at this point, I'm going to merge the formatting. So this little guy that comes up down here, the paste options, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to select this one, which is merge formatting to this document. And that puts everything in a little bit easier to, to deal with format. I'm going to go ahead and double click here and expand column A. So you'll see here that I have the student and parent names, where there's email addresses, I have their email addresses. And so I've got to just finish getting all of that into Excel. So I'm going to drag this on down. That first batch of 100 took me down to row 534. So I'm going to go ahead and select that row. I'm going to pop back over to Infinite Campus. I'm going to go to page two. Now I've noticed that Infinite Campus automatically maintains that selection even on page two. So I'm just going to confirm that everything is still selected. I'm going to hit control C for copy. Alt tab is going to jump me back over to Excel. Control V to paste in my second page of contacts. Um, now you'll notice my little box here has a control button. So I'm actually going to do a shortcut here. I'm going to press control and it brings this up into merge formatting or match destination formatting, you can just press the letter M key. So I'm going to press letter M. Now I'm going to bring this on down. Select row 1064, jump back over to Infinite Campus with Alt-Tab, go to my third page of contacts. I'm just going to confirm that everything is selected. Everything is selected. I'm going to hit Control-C, Alt-Tab back to Excel, Control-V to paste. I hit the control button and the letter M to match my destination formatting. I'm going to drag this on down. Now I'm on row 1592. I'm going to go ahead and select there, move on to page four. Confirm that everything is selected. It is. So I'm going to control C, alt tab, control V. Control M, drag it down. 
Monroe 2121. I'm back over here to my fifth and final page of contacts. I'm just going to confirm everything is still selected, so I'm going to copy that back over to Excel, paste it in. Control M and just confirm that I am all the way down to the Z's here, 2,554 rows of data. Yeah, bring this on back to the top here. Now the issue is I have all the email addresses, but it's all mixed in with this other stuff. We have to get the email addresses over into a separate column by themselves. Um, and there's a couple of formulas we're going to need to use to do that. I'm going to come over to this Word document, but I'm going to make sure that this is in the uh, description of the video. So you just want to find these instructions and you can copy and paste the formulas from the video description into your Excel spreadsheet. Now I put over here that this first formula should go into column G, but it doesn't really matter which column you put it in. It depends on how your data pastes. Like I said, mine has as I've done this a few times now getting ready for the video, sometimes it goes into column A, sometimes it goes into column B. It's a little bit random. So it doesn't really matter which column you put it in, but I'm going to go ahead and copy this first formula. And head back over to Excel. And for now, I'm just going to go ahead and put this into column B, and I'm going to paste that formula in. Okay, and the error I got here I think has to do with what's in the formula because this shouldn't be B right now, it should be A. But sometimes you may find that your, your data may paste into column B, which is what mine did to begin with, which is why I have this formula. So I'm going to make a little adjustment. I'm just going to turn all these A's, all these B's, into A's. And that should fix me up. All right, and so now I'm going to go ahead Hit enter and I'm going to get an error, which is actually correct because what we're doing with this formula is we're finding every cell with an at symbol in it and having that value display in this column. So it's going to give me an error unless there's an email address, in which case it'll display that email address. Now what I did, which is a pretty neat feature of Excel, is I just double clicked on that little right bottom square. And as long as my formula is in the next available column, it automatically extends it all the way down to the end of my data. So you'll notice that everywhere there's an email address to the left, I get that email address. And everywhere there's not an email address, I get this you know, number value error. And that's just fine. We're okay with that for now. So we're going to bring this back to the top. I'm going to go ahead and double click my B column and expand that just to make it a little bit easier to look at. So our next step is we're going to get another formula in the next column. And because what we need is we need all these errors gone and we need just the email addresses by themselves. So I'm going to come back to my instructions here. And I'm going to select this next formula. Now, again, it depends on how your data pastes. I've got uh, the G column identified here, but that's not going to be correct. We'll have to do a quick little edit on that. For your data, it may or may not be correct. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come back over here. And in row C1, I'm going to paste that in. And I've got a circular reference here. So what I've got to do is I've got to change these Gs into Bs because that's really what I'm looking for. And what I'm doing with this formula is that anywhere, if there is an error, I'm replacing that error with nothing. If there's not an error, it's going to show me what's there. And so right now, since there's an error, I have nothing. So I want to go ahead and extend this formula. I'm going to double click. It's going to drop it all the way down, and you'll see that wherever I had an email address, I now have that over, but all of my errors are gone. Something that I didn't point out to the, with that first formula is it also adds a semicolon and a space to the end of the email address, which is important for getting it into Outlook. So at this point, I'm going to head on down to the bottom of column C.
And I'm going to stick one more formula down here at the end of column C. This one is going to get all of those email addresses formatted for Outlook. So here it is. And again, I'm going to have to change my column letter just because it depends on how your data pastes over. I'm going to copy that one in. I'm going to paste the formula here. I'm going to come up here and I've got to change a couple of things. First one, I'm going to change this H to a C. I'm going to change this H also to a C and I'm going to replace these number, number, number signs with the final row of my data. So that for me is row 2554, 2554, and then I'm going to hit enter. What that does for me here is now it takes every one of these email addresses, puts them in a single cell separated by a semicolon and a space, which is what Outlook needs. So I'm going to go back to this cell and I'm going to control C to copy the contents of that cell. And it actually will get all of your email addresses rather than the concatenate formula. So now I'm going to head over to Outlook and I am in my contacts area and I'm going to start a new contact group. Up here, I'm going to add members from Outlook contacts is fine. And down here in the members bar, I'm going to control V and paste. That's put in all of those email addresses, however many there were for all of my students and all of the parents. I'm going to hit OK. I will you frequently get this dialog box when there's a lot of them. 381 members to this contact group. I'm going to hit yes. And there it is, all of them right in there. I've got to give this a name, so I'll just call it all students and parents. Save and close. And now over here, I have it show up as one of my contacts. I can right click on this, create an email, and there it is. Now I'm going to drag this down into the blind copy area, and I am ready to send an email to all of my students and parents through Outlook instead of Infinite Campus. Hope this helped you. If you found this helpful, please you know, like and share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.